we'll make a start. So welcome everybody and thank you so much for joining me and thank you so much to those of you who've been contributing towards my Buy Me A Coffee Fund. I've just seen your payment come through Swayze, so that's really great. So um, when you contribute towards my fund, I do, at the end of the mini course, I send you the um, video playbook, or well, the link to the video playbook, which you can then download for free. Oh, Mary, you can't hear anything. Mary, do you want to do what you did yesterday and leave the meeting with a big red button at the bottom and then just immediately join back in? It seems to work for me. Um, I think it's just one of those glitches. So why don't you try doing that? And then in the event that you still can't hear anything, Mary, I, I will send you the video this afternoon so you will be able to see what, and hear hopefully, what we've been doing. So can everybody give me a thumbs up or just wave at me? Can you all, apart from Mary, can you all hear me okay? So it looks, Mary, as if you're the only person with, with, with the issue. So yeah, try, um, like all good ITS experts, they say, don't they, just press the computer on and then press it off again. So um, fingers crossed that will work. So welcome to this next series of, um, a mini series of flower arranging. And the big shock horror is that I'm actually got some flowers to use today. So we're coming into the height of the summer season. So even I have managed to get in my meager growing collection of flowers, some fresh cut flowers. So I still haven't been out to the shops. I haven't been out to the florist, which opened last week. I'm still not going to the supermarket. And so I'm relying on what flowers I've got from what I've got growing in my garden. So hopefully, um, you know, the silk flowers will be packed away for another time when I can't get hold of my flowers. But what I thought would be quite a nice thing to do is I know that um, quite often for those of you who come to real life classes and those of you who are following me on Facebook regularly, that you will see that I do enjoy going to the charity shop and you know buying something for a few pence and reusing it, giving it a fresh life. So I thought, although I've not been able to go to the charity shop, I did do a Facebook Live in my free group, Flower Start World, last week, where you saw those huge boxes that I've got stored in my front room. And I thought, actually, I'm going to go through these boxes to see whether there is anything I can um, reuse that perhaps I might have gone out and bought so there's nothing worse you, know, you give stuff away don't you and then you end up buying it all back again or someone else's stuff you're buying back so I am going to be using some of those projects so today's project excuse me I've got itch um, is going to be using a basket now if you are into flowers and your friends know you like flowers it's possible that perhaps you are the recipient of a load of baskets I know that my friends give them to me they've had you know, gifts of flowers from friends and they, they come back to me and they say, I've got this basket, Julie, do you want it? And normally it comes with a dried up bit of oasis in the end, which they saved for you. And you can't reuse the oasis, the flower phone, once it's dried out. And anyway, it's got these pock marks in it, so it's never got the holes in the right place for what you want to do. So this is the opportunity for you to reuse those baskets or when you're able to, you can go car booting for baskets or charity shopping for baskets or just to see what you've got left around at home. So I have managed to find this basket and you'll see it's got two colours on it. It's dark here and it's white here and that's because I've done a, a paint finish on my basket. So this was a normal everyday basket in that, you know, boring, bland brown. And what I've done off camera in order that I didn't get wet um, hands was I've given it a bit of a paint job. And to do that, I've used, you will be, you've seen a lot of this acrylic paint over the last few weeks. I got a dot of acrylic paint, I put it into a saucer, probably a, a squirt of about 2 pp size. I then got a paintbrush. And you know normally when you do your painting, you put your paintbrush in and you slop, 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 slop. This is a dry paintbrush technique where you, you aim to get as little paint on your brush as possible. So I dipped my, imagine this paint in there, I dipped the paint, my brush into the paint, and then I got a piece of kitchen towel, imagine that's kitchen towel, and I dotted off the paint so it was really a light covering of paint. And then I just flipped back and forth over my basket. And I, the one tip I will give you is that when I started off, I my first stroke of paint was right near the bottom of the basket because when you do this until you get the idea of the sort of lightness of the flick of paint you i always find your first bit is really quite heavy you know that's not thick and you can just see where you started so rather than having that sort of paint splodge across the top or somewhere really visible i started round at the bottom 
and you know paint 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 like this and then every time I dabbed in with my new um when I needed new paint I, I mocked it off on my kitchen towel so my hands pretend to be my kitchen towel and gave this light finish so you can see there that that was the original color I've just given a frosting of paint so you could do it in a much much thicker color if that's what you wanted I will say that if you wanted to make your basket a totally different color <laughs> excuse me it's quite hard work to do because of the weave and the three-dimensional quality it's quite hard work to get in to all those um, nooks and crannies and hence that's why I just thought I would zhuzh it up a bit from the dark brown just to that sort of basket weave it's not so it's given it a, a highlight really and just a slightly fresher look but you decide how many layers that you want to build up entirely up to you and then the hardest thing you're going to find is when you want to arrange flowers in there you can't arrange flowers direct in there because it's not a watertight container i'm trying not to use flower foam because it's not very environmentally friendly and also i've got a dwindling supply of foam and i don't want to go out and buy any more so you need to look for a container that you can put water in that will sit inside your vase so as i say saturday afternoon it took me forever to find the right size container i've got um, a sugar bowl from a vintage tea set that belonged to my mother-in-law i'm holding it like that because it's got a whacking great big chip out of the bottom and i've never glued that bit in but it fits right inside so you're going to have to go through your cupboards with your basket thinking you know will that cereal bowl fit will that little mixing bowl fit will a teacup fit so that is just a good fit for my basket it sits in there it's it's got enough shape it's going to hold water but it doesn't protrude up above the basket and then the next thing you need to do is if you wanted to arrange flowers in as you would discover when you arrange flowers in a vase when your mouth of your container is quite large that your flowers will flop over all over the place so you need to create the easiest thing to do is to create a grid to arrange your flowers through so they all hold in place so you know me i like you know don't like to spend any money on anything elastic bands so these are the elastic bands that you'll find in the street where the postie has dropped them and um I, I quite often go, you know, I'm almost going behind the postie, picking them up. And that's what I'm going to be using to create a grid. So you do need to make, I know it sounds obvious, make sure they've got a bit of a stretch to them. The first few that I had in my practice at the weekend, I must have had the elastic band so long, as I pulled them, they snapped. So they don't last forever, they will perish. So I'm, because of the size of my bowl, I'm folding my band round in half, and then I'm putting it over my container like that and you can spread the bands out a little bit and this will be what will hold your flowers in place so it's quite tricky again because you're i've used a circular container trying to get something to hold in a circle that you may find your bands ping off um, so don't try and be too precious about wanting you know perfectly straight grid lines because it's just not going to happen so twist it round and then add it in so i've that's three bands so far the three are probably enough but i've got four so i'll use four and just sort of aiming for where i've got a, a bit of a space so the other health warning with this comes in but that looks great and you can imagine arranging your flowers through that but when i show you the other end it's quite bulky on the edge here so when you've got it lying flat on your surface it's not as stable as you know a traditional vase would be because it's got these little bits of bands underneath add that to the fact that your basket isn't flat it's got all the ridges where it's been woven that you just run the risk that it's not actually going to sit steady in your vase it's going in your basket it's going to rock around so i would just it's nothing wrong with that but you just need to be aware of that and if you are you know making your little arrangement in the kitchen and you then want to move it to your living room you just need to be aware that as you're walking from room to room it's going to rock around so i would put um, a mat or something on your surface just to protect it now by the magic of television i'm going to pretend that i'm adding water to my vase i'm not i'm not so you will need to remember to add water i'm not adding water at the moment because it's just too um it's too dodgy with computer and me and knocking things over so i will need to remember to add water afterwards but imagine there's water dripping down there 
and then you need to get on with the arranging. Now, you can't see what I'm doing here. And um, I used to have a turntable that sat up, which I can't find. <laughs> so I've got a box here. And, and um, Mary's got her daughter coming around to sort out her tech. That's good. So I've got a box here. And inside this box, any guesses what's in this box? It is full of flower food. So um, I don't know about you, but I'm always saving the bits of flower food off um, at the end of my, um, when you buy a bunch of flowers. And I think I've got so many, I'm never going to be actually be able to use them. But I thought that would just make a good upright bit so you can see what I've got. So that's just purely so you can see what I'm doing. So basket with a bit of paint job, my mechanics, which is the hardware for holding your flowers in place. Of course, I couldn't do that if it's actually got water in. And then the fun start begins. We're going to do our flower arrangement. Now, before I do my flower arrangement, I thought it would be quite nice if I put a bit of a decorative detail on my basket. And baskets and ribbons and bows just go together. So I have got um, a piece of gingham ribbon here. So it comes on a big roll. And I've got a pack of pipe cleaners. You don't need pipe cleaners. If you had a floristry wire, this would work equally as well, but it may be that you might not have floristry wires, but you may have a crafting stash. So some of you, um, oh good, Mary's back. She can hear again, that's great. So you may have seen me do this before, but just as a refresher, I've cut off a length of ribbon, which is about as long as my arm, and I'm holding it up in front of me as it's resting on my hands. And I'm, twist, I'm holding sort of, a third of the way in and I'm crossing over the ends of the ribbon there and it's like I've made a little fish with the body here and the tails there. If you hold where you've crossed over and you let that sink down onto this loop at the back you can see that it makes a bow. So this is just a much easier way than making it. You could just piece, put a piece of ribbon on and tie a bow as you would tie your shoelace but you don't always get equal sized loops and tails. So this is just another way of a flourish cheat to make it look as if it's an effortless bow. And that's how it's done. So it's the piece of ribbon, cross it over, and where it crosses, let that fall back onto the back of the loop. And then you can scrunch it together because that would be the, the middle point. Scrunch, so it's looking more and more bow-like every time. Take your pipe cleaner or your floristry wire Put that round the middle, you can just see it there, and then I'm going to squash all the, the ribbon there so in order that I can pinch my pipe cleaner together and twist it tightly, and that is what holds the bow together. And then because the ribbon is quite sturdy, I can reshape it all, so it doesn't matter that you've crushed it, but you end up with a bow that it is, it's been made effortlessly. And you can tie this using the ties that you went around the ribbon onto the handle. But what I find is better, because you, the basket's got a weave to it, I actually thread it through on the side here and it just seemed to fit a bit more snugly. So I will put that on there. And then twist, tie it in place like that. And you can then cut the, the excess off. You've got a bow then, which makes it all look pretty. And I would just tuck in these cut ends of the pipe cleaner so you don't get scratched. And if you wanted two bows, you could put another bow on the other handle, or if you wanted to um, wrap um, you could wrap ribbon around the handle of the bow as well and if you were felt like it and you had the inclination you could wrap over the rim as well you know sort of as if you were stitching round with your ribbon so you may need if you're going with the handle possibly a, a dot of hot glue occasionally so it doesn't all unravel but you can do as much or as little as you like so on with the arranging itself so I have picked a few stems from my garden and what I like to do first of all when I arrange my flowers is I do everything with the greenery first. It's almost as if I'm sketching out um, my arrangement so I can decide how big I want it, how high I want it. And because this is quite a rustic um, basket, and as it's sitting there, it's not entirely straight, it's got a bit of a kink to it. 
I'm definitely going to embrace that country style. And you need to be able to, you know, you match your flowers to your basket to the look that you want to create. And this is just saying to me, it's going to be a little bit of a free form arrangement as if I just pick my flowers from the garden, because that is what is being dictated to number one by the flowers I've got. And number two, by the style of basket I've got as well. So I'm going to start off with my greenery. So I just need to push my little bits here out of the way, bring in my bucket of flowers. So they've been sitting in water. And I like to start off with the green first. And what I do have a lot of in my garden is this sedum, which is also known as the ice plant. So I'm going to start with my sedum. And I've got some shorter stems tucked in here as well. And let's go crazy. Let's see how big an arrangement I can make in, in a really quite a small container. So the easy thing to do would be to get lots of short stems and just put them quite low into the basket, but that's not good enough. We're going to go big today and set ourselves a challenge. So what I will do with each of my stems, even though I've given them a fresh cut, can you see there I've cut it at, I'm quite sure you can catch that. I've cut it at an angle so there's more surface area to take up water. I always recut and I pull off the lower leaves so that as the stems, oops, I've got a stray leaf in there, go into the water, it's just the ends of the stems that go in. So there's nothing going to rot off in the water and the, and the small container, my sugar bowl, isn't going to become congested with bits that I don't need in there. So slide it in. So that will slide in and you can see there, I've got it pretty much horizontally and it's not going anywhere. But if I, it's, it's because I can see down here that the elastic band is holding it in place. And you wouldn't be able to do that without that grid work at the bottom. So I could go massive, I could perhaps, if I wanted to make this equal, I could measure up against that first piece of green to get approximately the same length. And I could go quite large and put something in the other side, like that. The interesting thing about here, you can see that the sedum is naturally arching this way, but when it's one of those plants that when it takes up water tomorrow, it's quite likely it will start moving up towards the light. So sometimes you get flowers that do that, like tulips do, they don't stay still. And then I shall put my other materials in. So this one here is cut a little bit shorter. So I do like to work in a sort of pattern in my mind. I put the two long pieces in so they were equal. And then I put a piece in here towards the front. I then put a piece towards the back. So there is a sort of a balance to it, although I'm not being really strict about what I'm doing. And I'm just trying to create that sort of illusion that the shape of what I'm going to be putting in. So if I swish that round, you can see what it looks like. You can see it's going to be quite large and loose. I just need to remember when you're working, which way is the front? So um, you want to make sure your flowers are, if you're having a front facing arrangement, you put all your good flowers in the front bit instead of forgetting which way is the front and then wondering why half of your flowers are around the back. And then you can start to add in. You've got the basic shape. These here are like dead nettles. I picked them up on my walk the other day and I thought they looked quite pretty. So they do look like stingy nettles. Instead of having the white flower of the dead nettle, this is a purple. And I can put those in as well. So I'll start off perhaps taking the sedum as my guide and perhaps have a longer piece next to that bit of sedum. There, trim off these, oops, side shoots because they're going to get in my way and perhaps echo that bit and put this piece over here. You can see it's got a bit of a wiggle on it going like that. And even these little bits here, that's all the offshoots at the end, if you can see that, you can cut those down and start to fill out in the middle. And you'd work your way through your box of goodies, adding things in. So I've got some uh, cow parsley here, so I can, even that's on one stem, when I hold it to put it in, I can gently pinch everything together and put it in. And that creates a bit of a fluff there. And it's quite a nice contrast between the almost rubbery oval shaped leaves. And then you've got this contrast of this very small dainty flower. So it's thinking about what you're putting in together. 
and um, complementing things by having um, contrasting textures and shapes and colours and that kind of thing. So what I will put in is I've got a little bit of choisier. So this is a common garden shrub which smells a bit of catwee, but it's quite a nice shape because it makes it's sort of got this sort of rosette formation. And I'm going to put this in at what's going to be the front of my arrangement, which is currently around the back for you. But I will show you where I put that in. Can you see that it's created quite a low area of definition? It's quite a yellowy green, a yellowy foliage. And again, it gives, gives a contrast to what's there about. And that's why I'm going to build my focal area. So whatever you do, it's quite nice to have this area where your eye lands on immediately. And then it sort of peters out to the outer edges. And again, I need to turn this around so you can see what I'm doing at the edge here. So to supplement that focal area, you could think about flowers. So I've got Sweet Williams here, and I'm going to cut them quite short so they sit low into my little arrangement. So I'll put these in and then I'll twist it round again for you. So can you see there, we had the choice here in there, and then I've got the focal area here, and then it's sort of, your eye bounces out to the side. I have got another one over here, so I could perhaps, you know, we like to think in odd numbers as flower ranges. So this one here, you can't immediately see it, but it's sort of got this connection of threes, and it's quite handy to put things in in sort of shapes of triangles. But also, of course, when you look at this on your side, um, you don't want everything to be on show, first of all. You want those that are going to appreciate your flowers to kind of work a little bit. So it's like you're creating these little fairy trails going through your garden. And then you can add in whatever you've got. So, you know, I've got, that was knocked over by the lawnmower. It's a piece of Stachys lamb's ear. It's quite um, beautiful, um, soft, velvety texture. As I come around here, I might think well, I've got room for one of these. So this is when doing these... Um, garden arrangements and the basket arrangements are really good because you can use up all the odds and ends so when sometimes if you go into a very formal flower arranging class you know you'll get told to do everything in threes fives and sevens and there's going to be a set blueprint of what you're going to do but sometimes life isn't like that and if you're buying flowers in the supermarket you know you'll have noticed you get one gerbera one rose one carnation it's what you're going to do with them and that's where this informality can come in. So you can see there that as I bring it to the back, it's you know, against a plainer background. You've got something that's a bit bigger and a bit bolder than just having a rounded range, which would be beautiful in itself. But if you've grown these flowers yourself, or if you've been to the supermarket or florist and bought these flowers, you don't always want to cut everything short because um, you want to be able to show it off and, you know, you know, look at that beautiful arrangement. I not only did I arrange it myself, but I grew everything there as well. And if it's smaller, but um, it's not quite so eye-catching. So it's about making something as big as you can, as reasonably, I mean, you can't, you can't go huge if you live in a tiny flat and you've only got one shelf you put your flowers on. I would say go big and show off what you've got rather than going automatically smaller for everything and, and just see how it goes. You will need to remember though that with my sugar bowl is quite small and the flowers will take up water and you need to make sure that your flowers are going to live so you will need to be poking your fingers down into the sugar bowl every few days and if the tips of your fingers aren't wet you'll need to very skillfully add in some more water and I would do that over by the kitchen sink let everything drain and then carry it back to where you want it to go so I've got uh, all sorts of things in this bucket I'm not going to put all of them in Things I've got in my garden at the moment, I've got these alliums, I think this is a white one, we've got purple as well. But the flowers have gone over, but that gives quite a nice seed head to put in. And actually it'll dry, so that'd be great to bring out at Christmas and spray it gold. And you might want to put that in, I'm going to try and arrange that backwards. You know, something a little bit like that, and you sort of think, well, should I put it in or leave it out? And then you decide. It's a bit like going to the optician, when the optician says, can you see it better with? Or without or with and just think well is it adding anything to my arrangement can you see it um and where you know where do i want to put it and you decide so you can move things around but uh, you just need to be a tiny bit delicate because you don't want to be too heavy-handed and um 
Sue is saying, very pretty. Thank you, Sue. It's, um, and thank you for joining us. So, you know, you put it in and once you've got your flowers to their final resting place, quite often as well, I tweak things a little bit because you think, well, actually, it looked all right when I was working on it, but now I've got it against this wall. It doesn't quite work so well. So the last thing I'm going to add in, I have got, you know, a bucket of bits there that's um, going to move us out of the way for the moment. And that is um, poppy seed heads. And we talked about these this morning on my Facebook Live. So now is the season for poppies. And if you live in the countryside, you'll have probably seen fields of poppies near you, the ones growing in the farmer's fields. Our big poppy field has gone over now. I think probably the, the petals were um, blown off and um, destroyed by the we had quite a heavy rain, I think, on Thursday evening. But these are the ones that I've got growing at home. And you'll quite often find if you're walking out and about, they'll be growing out of, you know, almost piles of rubble and stone and cracks in the pavement. So they're about, um, they probably come up they're over knee height, sort of between knee and hip height. So they go quite tall and they have the papery flowers that can be, you know, white, pink, purple. The flowers don't last very long and they do, if you're going to cut them, they do ooze a bit of milky sap. So you just need to be careful of that. But they, the flower, as the flowers fade, the seed heads develop. And I just think those are absolutely beautiful. They've got quite a sort of gray glaucous color to them and they will dry out. So they will go this um, a beige, you know, beige light brown color. And then the seeds will shake out so you can save those or shake them around your garden. But again, that's something nice to add in, which is of the moment and seasonal, but also a good one to have in store um, because you could be spraying these gold at Christmas time. And um, I'm going to try and group those in together. It's a bit weird arranging when you can't see what you're doing. But put those in as a group. So this time I am going to group them together rather than have one at either end where the impact will be lost. Because I want to showcase these, I'm going to have them making a little group. So they're sort of as visually as dominant as the Sweet Williams I've got. So you'll see Sweet William, Sweet William. And then this cluster of three will make up another bit of the focal area. You can see there, I've even managed to angle that one round a bit because I can feel that as I'm working with the elastic bands holding all the stems in place and all the stems now sort of interlocking inside the, um, the uh, sugar bowl, that it's giving me the freedom to um, put, the, put the flowers and the plant material where I actually want them to do, to, to be. So I am going to, um, if we take it, if you want to take yourself off mute, I will um, open up the forum for questions for the last 10 minutes. And that's what I've done. So I've got, we go from the bow, you know, we've got the long line, the bow, the group of poppies there, the sort of traditional folk layer with my light and the flowers in the center, and then drifting off into the outer edges.